<clears throat> hey, scholars. Okay, I'm going to just help you with this reading. It is confusing, and I uh, Polybius is not easy to read, and and this, uh, but I wanted to just have you experience the literature of it. Okay, so this is about the Roman Constitution, this idea of a Roman Republic, which is so fundamental to all what is considered good government in the mo in the world today. The idea that you have a type of three-part system in which the, there's the rule of the one, the rule of the few, and the rule of the many, and that there's this type of checks and balances between them so that no one dominates completely. And so it creates for a very confusing government. But in the confusion, in the inefficiency of that government, what's able to flourish is the people's freedom, okay? So let's, uh, let's talk about this. So he starts about, you know, this is Polybius, little preamble there, and then he goes into, okay, let's talk about this, that there are the three kinds of constitutions, and what he's meaning is three times of government, kingship, aristocracy, and democracy. And then, you know, the best, com the best constitution, then is a combination of all three. Okay, that's the key. It's a combination. And he pulls this idea from Lycurgus. And you can go back to the Lycurgus reading and see it in there. And so he then goes on to say that, okay, that we're not coming up with this out of nowhere. And then he says, uh, so he points out that there is, you know, there's no true democracy so we're, we're not going for sort of a perfect government. And in fact, perfect governments aren't right. So here he goes to six kinds of government, which means that every one of the three has an alternative. You know, is that, is that uh, the, you know, monarchy turns to tyranny, oligarchy can turn into some sort of power of the few, and then the democracy can turn into mob rule. And mob rule, this is throughout history. This is what we don't want is mob rule. So uh, the Roman Constitution is this system. Now, he goes into a little history here. Is This gets into this vice that's engendered, that everyone, you know, every monarch tends to become, you know, a tyrant. And then every, and here we can go with aristocracy, which is the rule of the best, tends to become a oligarchy, which is the rule of the few, but it's in self-interest here, and this is where the best and good, and then that leads to a, a uh, democracy, but democracies fall into mob rule, and then a who, who takes over is a king. So this is instabilities of government if you run, if you try and pick just one government, so what we want to do is to mix all three. And then this very interesting, he says that, you know, Lycurgus, by a process of reasoning, came up with this. But the Romans have reached it not by a process of reasoning, but by the disciplines, discipline of many struggles and troubles. So by experience, okay? And so this is a a type of system which comes with rationality and experience. It deals with ideals, but it's also very practical. And so this is the foundation of what is comes into our founding fathers in America and, and into most modern governments around the world today is this notion of a, of a government that takes into account, first and foremost, a type of flaw in humanity. And the, this flaw in humanity is that the you know that power corrupts, and this is what Otnes had said in uh, Herodotus. Remember, power corrupts, and then you would think it wouldn't corrupt people who are all wealthy and powerful, but it does. And so, what we need to do is mix these governments. Now, he then talks about the different offices, the consuls here. There's two of those. And then he talks about the Senate here, and you don't have to you don't have to memorize any of this sort of stuff. But the Senate is the is the the few, the oligarchy, the aristocracy, and the council, consuls is you have two of them for one year, so with term limits. 
so that you only uh, you don't get very much power there. It's the very weak system for the king. And then you get down to this is uh, you're talking about the people. What's left for the people? Well, dang it, a lot. And they manage a lot of issues, but um, they do so largely through their Senate, okay? And then most importantly is that the tribunes, even a single tribune can veto, okay? So the people must be submissive to the Senate, okay? The Senate's sort of all powerful and stuff like this, but the senators are representing the people, and then the people are submitting to the Senate. So there's this dynam dynamism there of back and forth, a mutual responsibility, mutual obligation to each other. But the tribunes can come in with their veto. Okay, uh, so this is the Constitution. This is this notion of a Republican government. The specific duties differ, but mostly for the the issues of uh, good government, you have to have all three participating and all three having certain powers. And what you're trying to avoid at one level is the king, is the monarch that takes absolute control. And then the other is especially, is you want the freedom that comes from a democracy that isn't mob rule. Mob rule isn't freedom. That's anarchy. Okay, so this is the basics, and don't get too over concerned about understanding all of Polybius here. I just wanted you to see it how the Romans really did think this stuff out. And you have a uh, this is written a couple hundred years BC, and it's very, very good. Now, quickly, I want to look at two things that come up to uh, that um, don't appear in our constitution in the United States and don't appear in modern constitutions, but. They are sort of, well, they're still around. So, but the thing is that you have a dictator, okay? And the Romans believe the first great dictator is Cincinnatus here. And this is the story of Cincinnatus, is that, they, is that every once in a while, the, especially when you're being attacked in a military situation, a dictator must be created. So you need to make the government efficient. So you, you get rid of the sort of normal rule of government, and you have this military rule. This is normally what's called martial law, okay? Martial meaning, a, you know, it's a military law. And you have this one dictator who's in charge. And so, so in Rome, they had actually the notion of a dictator as a person who is needed in a crisis. And the best thing about a dictator is, is that they have a term limit, and then the best thing about um, Cincinnatus is that he resigned even before his, uh, his uh, term limit was up. So the idea that a dictator resigns, this is, becomes then the highest level of, you give a person all power, but then they resign from this. They don't take it. They don't misuse it for their own purposes. So Cincinnatus is a great model of the, the person who takes power but then responds by, by um, uh, having a very high sense of responsibility. And uh, George Washington is the person in our history who, who is able to do that. Now, so that's the, the dictator. The other position is called censor. Okay? And um, let's get it. This is the beginning of the censorship. This is where we get the term, you know, the, the censor, which is to, uh, you know, censor books, to censor movies. It's basically to look after the morals. And so the Romans also had a type of official who was a senator. And he talks about here how, the, you know, it's, it grew, it evolved, this position evolved in the Roman as a, as a person who keeps the Roman Senate moral 
moral and online and not taking bribes and stuff like that. Remember in the book of Amos, it says what's, you know, God's all mad because of bribes. Bribes are completely destroy the system. So, so what you need to do is make sure that people aren't taking bribes, make sure that the system is working. And that's going to be a censor. We would today might think of this as a judiciary, a uh, separate judiciary, and it may, that may actually be a model. But let's just close off here real quick is that you have two consuls, a senate, and you have various calls for assemblies, but then especially the office of tribune. And you have veto power, you have term limits. This is the fundamentals of the system power of the purse is over here to give to these folks there to use. And then with this is the, um, this notion that it every once in a while is going to fail and that you're going to need to create a dictator. And then uh, the Senate, because so much power is given to the Senate, you need to have a person on the outside or actually one of the Senate's senators who will be a censor and will uh, can actually remove a person from the Senate. Uh, so it's a, it's a very interesting system. It's going to last for about 500 years, maybe even a thousand years, depending how you did, uh, how we uh, date it. We'll get into some of the complexities of it, but it's the model of what gets called a republic. Okay, res publica. This is the public things, you know, public system. All right, so uh, um, don't, yeah, the reading is confusing. Don't worry about memorizing and all sorts of stuff like that. But on the other hand is you should be able to, what are the three parts of governments? How do they essentially work in the Roman Empire?